Hi, I'm Stephen Leone from MiniCircuits Applications Engineering in Brooklyn, New York. In this video, we're going to walk you through the basic user calibration process for the EVNA Vector Network Analyzer. If you've done any RF measurement, you know that proper calibration of the instrument is an essential step to minimizing measurement errors and obtaining accurate results. Measurement errors can be classified as systematic or random. Where random errors change from acquisition to acquisition, systematic errors remain constant over time, so it is possible to remove them by applying error correction to the raw measured data. Calibration is the process of acquiring the error terms that describe the systematic errors through measurements of known calibration standards. The EVNA has two levels of calibration. System correction is performed only once and done at the factory. User correction is done routinely by the operator to ensure accurate results. And that's what we're going to be walking you through today. You should perform a calibration first thing each day or at the start of a new test session. Anytime there's a change in the external connections of your setup or a change in the environmental conditions like temperature, it's a good idea to redo a user calibration. The calibration process for the EVNA is based on short, open, load, and through, or SOLT standards. These standards must be characterized across the full frequency range of the device. It's important to match the calibration kit to the connector type being used for the measurement. Many circuits offers cal kits for SMA and N-type connectors with definitions that are pre-loaded into our software. I'll be using the mini circuit standards for simplicity, but you can also use any other SOLT cal kit standard that you have in your lab. For creating or modifying cal kits, you can refer to our user manual, or you can request an XML cal kit definition file from the mini circuits application support team. To be clear, there are several different calibration methods you can use depending on the type of measurement and level of accuracy required. For the sake of this demonstration, I'll be walking you through the full two-port SOLT method, which is the most accurate method for measuring two-port devices. Before you start the calibration process, allow the instrument to warm up for about 15 minutes. The temperature indicator in the EVNA Studio software will turn green when it reaches a stable temperature. At this point, Connect any required connectors, cables, or adapters between the VNA and the device under test. These elements will be de-embedded from the measurement during calibration, at which point the reference plane will be set at the DUT connectors. It's always good practice to minimize the total number of adapters and cables in order to reduce the chances for user error or performance drift, usually due to a loose connector or cable flexure. Start the calibration process by setting the signal sweep parameters based on the device you're measuring. It helps to have the device connected while you're setting the start frequency, stop frequency, number of points, and resolution bandwidth so that you get an idea of what your measurement will look like after calibration. As a rule of thumb, recalibration is typically required anytime these settings are changed. Next, you want to set the calibration type. Here, I'm selecting full two-port SOLT method. Now you should see a pop-up menu with the standards you need to measure. At the top, choose the device subclass. The device subclass defines the connector types of the DUT. Our DUT has an N-male connector on port 1 and an N-female connector on port 2. So this is an N-male to N-female subclass device. One by one, connect the appropriate calibration standard to the measurement ports of the EVNA and click the corresponding button to make the measurement. We do this for the open, short, and load on both ports, as well as the through measurement. For most device subclasses, including this one, use the appropriate through standard for this measurement. In the case of an insertable device, you have the option to perform a flush through calibration, which is a direct zero length connection between ports one and two. Those subclasses are denoted with an FL in the drop menu. We can make the isolation measurement by terminating both ports and taking the measurement. Note that the isolation measurement is optional and should only really be used for DUTs with high losses at some points in the measurement band, like some high rejection filters or switches in the off position. Once all the measurements are completed, apply the calibration and save the calibration state in the system menu for future recall. Now your calibration is complete and you're ready to measure your DUT. For more information about the basic theory behind VNA calibration, alternative calibration methods, and other options for different test scenarios, be sure to check out the full EVNA user guide and be on the lookout for more videos in this series. I'm Stephen Leone, and thanks for watching.